Out. It's operation, Heather. That's bored. Three life, yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. He will defend his police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get the ticket. We force it. But at the end of the day, each and every man is go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I am your host, Dave Bourne, and it is October 27th, 2016. Damn, time goes by fast. I was just saying that to somebody today about, I've mentioned this on the show before, but how when you're a kid and you go on summer vacation, it feels like a year. And then when you get older, just years go by so fast. Um, I guess that's good for the people that are in prison that are political prisoners, not, you know, people that have raped and murdered and things like that. But even with them, I don't believe in the system. I think there's another way to handle uh, murderers and rapists. And I'm not saying the way is to let them just walk around and not uh, get punished for what they do and not be locked up somehow uh it's just the whole format of the system so i'm not necessarily uh well i'm not saying at all that they should be walking around free i'm just saying that the system is fucked up um and that thing should be a lot different but at the same time there should be people that never get to have any freedom um, based on the things they did. However, that's very few crimes. And maybe we'll talk about that today. Um, I really, well, let me, <laughs> let me introduce the show and then uh, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, so uh, we're coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, as always. And thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All radio network, which now runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can listen live on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote the ideas of self-ownership and true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom, exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. Um, I should add that it is an oligarchy, in my opinion, and in the opinion of others, as they did a study on that. And we would be happy to hear from you, especially today, uh, where we're doing, we're always uh, happy to hear from you, but we would be especially happy to hear from you today where um, we're doing kind of a, a miscellaneous type show Um so we'd be happy to hear from you today at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Or via Skype at username nonpartisan liberty for all. You can also check us out at nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. That has all of the contact information. So if you forget the phone number or the Skype username, as well as links to our 
Facebook pages. We have four fa- Facebook pages and our other social media pages, uh, links to all the archives, the specific links, blogs, articles, pictures, lots of stuff there for you to look at and hopefully enjoy. <laughs> so that's all at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. So what I started to get into was today I had a show plan that I was going to do and I just moved that to next week about uh, teens and and their freedom and we've talked about kids and freedom um before but I'm going to focus a little more on teens and the whole ownership thing and some of the things that we've touched on before, but, um, to get more into detail on some of that stuff. Um, and I've been reading this book about how they tell you, you know, to punish them and things like that. And now they, they're, they got away from the hitting, which is good, but it's still that you're supposed to be in control and this and that. And, all things that once you hit the age of a teenager, I think things totally change. You can debate about, well, you can debate about anything, but, um, and I don't like to tell people what to do. So I'll say, in my opinion, the age of when, you know, a child should be, free um or i mean once they start walking and talking i mean they should have a certain level of freedom and self-ownership i mean really uh the fact that you they as long as they need another person to survive like infants or you know uh toddlers that's a a little different. So I'll agree with that. But, you know, when kids get to the age of like five, I mean, they know a lot of shit that's going on. And, you know, even at five years old. uh, So, um, shit, even younger than that. So it's hard to say when, um, a kid really, because they do own themselves, even a baby in a sense, there's some self ownership there in that. I don't think you should be able to do anything to them that is irreversible or that is something that. Like, you shouldn't uh, tattoo a baby um, for this, and most people won't, but they may be doing this in the future, um, or they may be doing it now, who knows, with uh, chips and shit like that, uh, or doing something at the hospital that's tiny and you don't even know about it. But the point being is that they own their body, and even though they can't say no, you shouldn't be doing things like that. But at the same time, you know, you can't let a one-year-old, I don't know when kids start to walk, like one, one and a half, whatever, or when they start to crawl, just crawl out the door and, you know, to wherever they're going because their mind's fully not developed and they can't survive on their own. They can't feed themselves. They can't, you know, yes, a five-year-old can't survive on their own um, sort of, because you could say you support them, but if they had to, they could. So in that sense, if a five-year-old was out in the wilderness by themselves, they probably, I mean, it depends where they were because if there's no food or no nothing, you know, you're eventually going to starve to death. But assuming that they could find food 
and it wasn't overly dangerous or they had uh, a couple guns or something, they may be able to survive on their own. I mean, they can definitely feed themselves and, and take care of themselves. So it's just that's one of the hardest things for when I look at and this is not what I'm going to talk about today, but uh, because I had mentioned the show I was going to do and I wasn't really going to talk about I would have mentioned this, but I wasn't going to I was going to focus more on teens. But it's hard to say, like, you know, that a five year old, if anybody said a five year old has the right to consent to certain things, people would right away say, no, they don't. The parent has the right. And that means the parent owns them. So it's it's hard to say when they have the right to consent. However, I will say that as a teenage, once you hit, you know, your teens, I, I believe you have the same rights as adults. And you did uh, hundreds of years ago, but somehow that got lost. And they say, well, that was only because you died by age, you know, 40. But that doesn't matter. I mean, and people got married at 13 and 14. So what is your point? I, I don't... I don't understand the, okay, well, because of this, this was okay then, but it's not okay now um, uh, explanation. So I'm not going to get into that tonight, um, although essentially I did have a show planned. I was going to uh, cancel tonight's show, so I moved it to Tuesday and then I fell asleep for a little while and woke up and I, it's hard for me to not do a show. It really is. Even though I have been having issues with energy and uh, always being tired and just between, um, the stuff with work is just, uh, mentally exhausting for me. So I was just going to take a break tonight and then I'm sit laying there and I have uh, my alarms always set for six because that's no matter what, I at least start by six or start to get ready because make sure the equipment's good and test stuff because no matter how many times I fucking like think all my settings are where they should be, there's always that time that something's not working or whatever. So I go and test my settings and, you know, if there's stuff I have to convert files and I have to create the, sh the show and get that ready. Um, so there's like a list of things I have to do. So I always start that at six. Now today I actually came on 15 minutes early because I was just ready to, to go and I really don't want to go past nine. So I get enough sleep, but, and who knows, maybe there's something wrong with me. Um, I, I physically, um, I don't know, but the just amount of fatigue and, um, you know, it could be stress related as well, but I'm not going to talk about all my personal stuff on here, but it's, this is for me, it's just so important and I want to make sure, even though, you know, like last week I missed two shows, uh, cause of some stuff going on at work and, I want to make sure that, you know, if I say I'm going to be on the air Tuesday through Thursday, that I am. I, I the, the only reason, to be honest, that I don't, um, that I'll miss shows and I don't look at it as a big deal, especially now that things are 24-7, is because I don't get a lot of live listeners. If I did, I it's weird because when I was on Blog Talk Radio, I did. Not a lot. 
I mean, when I say a lot, I, um, it's it's all relative to how many I get and how many are um, listened to after the fact. Um, so I, I don't say a lot and maybe they have trouble with the connecting or they're not doing it correctly or what. I don't know because I don't have any, although I've never listened to one of my live shows because I'm on the air. Actually, that's not true. I have because I uh, Ellen show that's on Mondays at seven o'clock Pacific. Um, I've listened to her show and I don't have any problems through my phone or through my computer or through the website or anything. So I don't know. Um, Maybe people are just busy. The majority of people at the time that it's on. And this is really the only time I can do the show. Uh, I could do it a little earlier and that's, that's about it. Um, I can't do it any later because of work and I, uh, can't do it any earlier than after work. So I'm kind of constricted, uh, when it comes to the time, but it, it, I don't get a lot of live listeners. They usually, they usually will listen to the archives. So if I knew that I had a certain amount of listeners, fuck, if I knew I had five listeners that listened every day live or 10, you know, sometimes it's none, to be honest, that will listen live. And then there'll be, you know, uh, a lot of people, again, it's all relative, but that listen to the archive, um, even over time. I mean, there was one that just recently uh, was like a hundred and something, and for me, that's a lot. I mean, if if I hit a hundred on every show right now, I'd be happy with that. Now, of course, my goal is to go way beyond that, but that's you know, I'm a small little radio network. I mean, I, I'm barely. I'm not really even a network if you want to get technical, but I call myself a network because I run it 24 hours a day and I have two shows on it and we're looking to add shows and we're still supposed to add another show, but that just hasn't come together yet. So I do consider it a network, but I mean, it's small compared to other internet um, shows, but there's a lot of internet shows that are right around the same amount of listeners too. So, uh, to the, I guess, very successful or semi-successful ones, it's really small compared to that. But there was a show from, fuck, it had to be, it might've been a month ago or maybe three weeks ago that it all of a sudden just got the most listens in the past week. And I'm like, what the fuck? And, and I think it went like up to 150 or something, you know? And the highest I've had is my show on Kratom. The first one went up to like 950, so almost a thousand. And that was a huge thing for me. Of course, the biggest show that I have, right, even though it wouldn't have made a difference because most of my listens aren't on YouTube, but YouTube, because of the subject, I guess, they didn't allow me to monetize it. They are really fucked up on how the restrictions they put on monetization and that means you know getting paid for shows you you really don't get shit i mean for even a thousand listens uh, it might be like 10 or 20 bucks and they won't even pay you till you get a hundred so i'm not i probably have like five dollars if i'm lucky just because again um the majority of listens that i get are you know, through the archives, because I can see our, our direct uh, Spreaker listens, which is fine. Um, but I don't know if there's a, a something on Spreaker that I can set up where I uh, get something. I, I don't think there is because they don't play commercials. And that's that's the difference. But I could play my own commercials if I could get a sponsor and things like that. And and those are all things I plan to do in the future. But like I've talked about, it's just uh, with this whole thing of just being tired all the time and 
um, doing the show and work and still being tired and, and wanting to do all these other things related to the show to make it more successful. It's just, it's hard. And, you know, hopefully I'll figure out what, you know, it could just be, I don't get enough exercise and, or I'm just not happy with things right now, or I'm just too stressed out or whatever. I mean, it could be a million things, so who knows, but somebody had recommended a B12 shot that the doctors, uh, you can get at the doctor's office and, you know, get like once a month and that that might help. So I, I might just try that and see if it makes a difference. Um, I had asked about vitamins, uh, B12 vitamins, which I have. And I did feel like I had more energy. And I do work out. A li- I mean, the amount of time I work out isn't that much. You know, I lift like weights and do some sets, but not many. And you know, um, do a couple other things that maybe in total is like 15 minutes just to do something. And then I go up, uh, like six flights of stairs when, um, when I'm going to work and when I'm going home. So that helps too. But, uh, yeah. So, (laughs) so for today's show, I had planned on just sleeping. I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to sleep. But I feel like, you know, I want to be on the air. I want to be talking to people, reaching people, talking about all these ideas. And I don't want to be wasting my life away sleeping. I mean, on days that I don't do the show a lot of time, uh, I've had Fridays where I've come home and just went to sleep to take a nap and I didn't wake up till the next day. And it's like, what the fuck, man? And it's... You know, there's nothing that I'm doing that's causing, you know, um, I should definitely, you know, take vitamins. The reason I I don't and I have before is it always fucking gives me stomach pains, which is another fucking issue I've been having too. But um, vitamins seem to give me stomach pain. So I, I don't know when to take like I thought about, well, just take them at night. I'd rather have stomach pains at night than in the morning when I'm going to work uh, because I would get kind of bad stomach pains. So at least, you know, if I got them and and I could still take something to get me to fall asleep. But I don't want to focus today's show on my physical issues. My point was, is that the reason why uh, today's show it's really not planned out and just kind of miscellaneous, uh, off the cuff, um, you know, material. I, I didn't really plan out a topic is because, you know, I did, but then I planned on not doing the show. So I didn't put any, uh, I didn't do research really for, the show that I had planned to do today, although a lot of it I already know, but you know, I didn't organize everything and clips, find some new clips and stuff like that. And so I wasn't really prepared to do it. And so we'll, we'll do that on Tuesday. Um, but there are so many things that are not only going on, I guess, but that, Um, I like to make sure I bring up every so often, or sometimes I feel I'm neglecting because I'm doing a show on a specific topic. Now, a lot of times we'll go off topic and get into a rant or something like that. And that's, you know, radio. Um, 
it, it happened yesterday where we got, you know, we're talking about basically when Ken Shorjan is on, who again, you can find at the daily com or uh, Ken Shorjan on YouTube, where we talk about the economy and geopolitics. And we started off with something else because it was a conversation that we were having off air about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But we got into other things uh, regarding government because me and Ken uh, differ on um, some things. I I actually think it, it depends how you look at it. So... If you go based on Larkin Rose, who the more I listen to, the more I like, because again, he's not somebody that I learned a lot of ideas from because I already had these ideas, but he's somebody who I, I I wouldn't say I learned how to convey them better, um, although he does convey them better. But I can't. It's too hard to kind of pick them up. Um, but just uh, that listening to him, you know, confirms so many things. But according to him, because I would say, and I, I don't want to get a whole conversation about, you know, Ken personally. I, I think Ken's a great guy and he does a great job with his podcast and his website and everything. And um, when it comes to issues on politics and the the economy and uh, geopolitics and whatever, but he would be considered a minarchist, you know, someone who wants limited government. And if you base uh, your, I guess philosophy is, or not base it off of his, but based on what Larkin Rose would say, he would say minarchist. And this is what I got from him. Now, maybe I misunderstood, but in, in some ways they're worse because they'll say, well, we're like you and we should combine together to fight everybody else. But this minarchist, I, I equate, almost to the people that want marijuana to be legal, but want to ban all other drugs. So I mean that in the sense of which I've talked about a bunch of times because those people scare me. Um, not that they scare me, but they're the, the there's no difference, but they, they scare me in that, People think that those people are somehow about freedom, and they're not. The people that, and this might not be the best analogy, or it might be a good analogy, but the people that are for the legalization of cannabis, but not for the legalization of most other drugs, or maybe they're for, you know, a couple that, you know, are natural or whatever, but most drugs, they're not. Really, any drug, if there's any drug they're not, uh, it still applies because they're, they're missing the, the point in, in a couple of areas. So you do have those people, and, and I would uh, kind of equate them to minarchists in a way because it's like, okay, they want to go to a certain point, but they still want to leave some control with the government and kind of the same thing. However, the marijuana people are worse. So the people that just want cannabis legal, but don't want to legalize heroin and they would be shocked at the, Oh my God, you you can't legalize heroin. And I, I've run into fucking people like that. Um, and been called, uh, what is this fucking asshole called me? Um, so you're crazy if you think, you know, people should legalize heroin. Like you're, you're a nut, you know, if really, and, and that's based on what, and that's what people will do. If, if people start off with criticizing you personally, that, and that, if that's their argument is 
personal criticism of you as you know as a person it's because they have no argument because an argument would be well it's too dangerous or i'm not saying this would be a good argument but um you're endorsing it or you're i mean because I could refute any argument on that anybody comes up with because it it's for some reason people think if you legalize a drug it means that everyone's going to start doing it. I don't know where they got that from, um, because even with the brainwashing that drugs should be illegal and drugs are evil and all of this stuff, I didn't see brainwashing of. If you legalize a drug, everybody will start doing it. But maybe it was more subconscious or being in the, um, when they're talking about drugs and when they've put out all the propaganda that was just inferred that obviously if you make drugs legal, then, you know, bad things are going to happen that are worse than when they're illegal. But those are the people that are scary because people think they're scary in the sense that people think that they actually support freedom when they don't. Because one, they don't support self-ownership. That's a given. If you... And I always use drugs because it's the easiest to use. And I used it yesterday in our conversation. And then um, I think uh, I I need to think of other things to use when it comes to this argument. But, you know, the whole uh, self-ownership thing and being able to choose what you want to put in your body. But if you think that the government should have anything to do with any substance whatsoever, which they never used to, that you're, you don't believe in self-ownership. It's just, it's, it's a fact. I mean, that's not even an opinion. If you can't say that you believe in self-ownership, but you think uh, certain substances should be illegal. I mean, you could say that, but it's not true. Um, it's, I was trying to think of an analogy, but I can't, the one doesn't come to mind right now, but it's, it's a, it's a total contradiction is what it is. It's saying, yeah, I, I believe that I own myself, but at the same time, the government, <laughs> Uh, If it's bad enough, you can't have an argument. It's not a valid argument to say, well, if it's bad enough, then the government should regulate it. But if it's not that bad, then you should do it. But I believe in self-ownership. And the majority of people would say that they believe they own themselves, I think, at least at some point. I don't know if they would say that anymore. Maybe they would. It'd be interesting to do, you know, a man on the street thing uh, regarding that. Because I think that most people, whether they say they own themselves or not, would be hesitant to come out and say, well, the government owns me. Because think about that for a minute. If you're admitting that the government owns you think of the ramifications of what that means the government owning you because if you don't own you right then who else owns you and that would be the government. I mean, you could say nobody, nobody owns you, but it nobody owning you is the same thing. If nobody owns you, then you should be able to put whatever you want in your body too. I mean, it's really, it's just another word for saying you own yourself because 
there were people that said they didn't like the word, uh, you know, that you own yourself or because they don't like the word ownership or something like that or whatever. But either way, if you say, well, nobody owns me, well, if nobody owns you, then you should be able to do whatever you want with your body. So you really only have three answers is, well, technically four, because there could be if you want to say that an actual person owns you, you could do that too. So there's either you own yourself, nobody owns you, which is the same thing as you own yourself. So that's really one answer. Uh, the government owns you, or you actually say that a specific person owns you. And that might in certain religions uh, be the case that people's husbands own them. And speaking of that, being that we're kind of on a, uh, I just saw a picture of this and uh, yesterday, I think I was, it was either yesterday, or the day before I was watching a documentary about hate, which was totally distorted. But I, I want to be honest about this and people can call me discriminate, discriminating against uh, Muslims for saying this if they want. And I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. But I always had thought, now, it don't get me wrong. When I say something, that's my personal opinion. I don't believe the government should get involved in it or it should be illegal or they don't have the right to do it. I'm just saying my personal opinion, what I think it does. So women that wear any of the Muslim garb. And, and I'm not saying like, if you wear like a Muslim dress, like it's, it's like, it's a, it's like a dress, like any other dress, but it's like, say somehow, a ethnic, you know, dress or something. I don't know. I don't know if they have a such thing, but, um, I think other religions may have some type of garb or, some shit that I don't know that you may wear, but, um, women that co totally cover themselves, number one, or even wear the hijab, the, the head fucking thing. I believe that. And, and of course the, it's so hypocritical. It's, it's hypocritical because it, it just, it shows that everything is about an agenda it's not really about like women's rights and shit like that. It's all about the political agenda of control it is what all this shit, whether it's, you know, women or minorities or whatever, the agenda of uh, that leans towards socialism and com communism and all that stuff. That's really what it is. They, they exploit uh, religion, race um gender to push an an agenda of um socialism and communism and things like you know oh, hate speech should be banned or whatever but i really believe that that what they're doing because where that comes from as far as i understand it and i'm sure there's a muslim that would tell me i was wrong but there's a bunch of Muslims that would tell me I was right. I, I think it's funny how on certain shows, and I'm not going to name, how they have one person that's a Muslim come on who happens to be, you know, all Muslims are great uh, because of what he says, because he's a good Muslim. But they could have, uh, if another show has a Muslim on who says, you know, fucked up things, their opinion, they're wrong. It doesn't matter. So what I'm saying is, is that, you know, there's different kinds of Muslims, just like there's different kinds of Catholics and whatever. But what, uh, and, and I don't be, believe in organized religion and believe me, I, I, I would criticize, uh, I, I, if I sat there and, and wanted to criticize specifics and religion that I know, I mean, I, I only know 
the surface basically because I'm not religious. And I don't believe in it. So I have no use to, I mean, I probably still should read some of those books just so I know what they're, the bullshit that they're putting out. But I, I, there are all ways to control people in my opinion. And I've talked about that before. So don't get me wrong. This is not about attacking Muslims. This isn't even about terrorism or anything like that. This is just about the fact that I feel like that sets women back, that that's disrespectful to women. Um, and it's another thing. And, and it goes along with, you know, you could say whatever you want, but if you look at a lot of these countries, women have no rights or they can't be educated and all of these things. So covering themselves up and being forced to cover themselves up, uh, whether it's just a headscarf, or their whole body goes along with all that shit. So to me, when I see that, um, I believe in their right to do it. I, I wouldn't say anything to them because that's their fucking business. But I believe that they're making it worse and harder for Muslim women in general to gain uh, equality. And that what that does is just give more power to Muslim men or their husbands or whatever. And yes, that is just my opinion based on what I know about uh, the Muslim religion or Islam, and which is more than probably other religions, but it's not a lot. So that's just my opinion. But it's consistent with a lot of these countries that are very bad when it comes to women's rights that are majority Muslim countries or follow um, Muslim law. So I just watched something that had um, women in it that were wearing them. So, and I just saw a picture uh, as on a website where they're flashing, you know, pictures with a guy who's wearing a thing on his head, but I think that's more for the fucking heat um, than anything. Um, but I think some of the stuff that they actually wear is because it fucking protects them from the heat. Um, it helps with, you know, when you're in the desert or whatever, but that would be uh, the men, but they, it might have some meaning as well. So I don't, I have no idea. So, I may sound like an idiot on that. I really don't give a fuck. So anyway, when it comes to women, though, I, I really do think that it, it and they don't feel this way, obviously, or they wouldn't wear them. But I'm sure there are a lot of Muslim women who do. So, you know, they can do what they want. That's their right. And their uh choice but they may be, be affecting other uh, muslim women by doing that but again i mean it's all about you know freedom if you directly affect somebody else's freedom so um if you affect somebody else and by if, if what you're doing and, and they try to push this to like the, this documentary that I saw about hate, they try to put and everybody that has listened to the show before, like I, I can't stand Donald Trump. Um, the one thing I agree with him on, although I don't, but I do that elections are rigged, but and it does happen to be rigged against him in this case but it's not because of who it has nothing to do with him so i don't really i don't totally agree with him but i agree that hillary is has already been it has already been decided and it has been a long time ago that hillary would be president but that was before he even got the nomination i believe so it's not really against him it's just pro her um so that is actually one thing i i agree with because i believe the whole system is 
rigged. But really, when it comes to elections, because of that, you know, first of all, people put all this time and uh, they talk about it every fucking day and they find every little aspect that they can talk about about presidential elections. And really, they're meaningless on a bunch of levels. On one level, uh, I believe that they're rigged anyway. So not the same way that Donald Trump does, that they're rigged against Donald Trump. Um, But, oh, sorry, the reason I brought up Donald Trump in the first place, and I'll get back to the election thing, is because they blamed uh, people's racism on Donald Trump because... They say that he's racist and it's giving people that are racist a forum where it's like saying it's okay. It's just fucking stupid. There are racist people and they're doing what they're doing, but to kind of, it's like the, it's almost like a setup to ban certain speech because what they're saying is, well, there's the leader up here and all the all these people are doing these things, whether they're doing them or not, I don't know. But they, let's say they are, whatever. But um, they're saying that they're doing them because this one person up here is an inspiration for hate. So kind of what they're doing is putting the seeds of that's dangerous if you have somebody that's a public figure, uh, especially running for president, but even if they're just a public figure going out and saying certain things. Now, whether he said hateful things or not, I I don't know. I don't follow everything he said. Some of them are racist things or not. I mean, some of them were definitely, uh, mean things that he said, like to, uh, certain news people and stuff like that and whatever. But it kind of sets that, I mean, he has the right to do that. Now you don't have to agree with it and you don't have to listen to it neither, but they're kind of setting up this whole, you know, uh, scenario to pass laws against certain types of speech. And I see it coming. I mean, we're just, we're headed for disaster. I mean, and and I mean, if you're, if you believe in, in, in freedom, if you want to be free. Now, if you want to be a slave of the government, which you partially are anyway, but I mean, if you want the government to continue uh, to move further and further into your life, um, which they've burrowed their way uh, pretty deep in there. People forget every day that they're spying on everything you do. Um, but if you want them to go further, um, that's what they're... You, you can see these things. That's what they're going to do. You can see it from things like this. Like right away, I see a documentary like this and I see the the exact propaganda that they're putting out there. It's not hard to see. You you can identify it right away. Now, the other side of it is I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Trump fan. I I can't stand him, um, nor can I stand Hillary. But that doesn't matter because I, I don't think there should be a president. Um, or a government. So there goes that whole thing anyway. But it doesn't even matter because it's rigged. And the election, people forget that the president, at least how it's supposed to be. Now, what's happening is that the president is 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 becoming more and more powerful, where they're being able to do a lot of things that they're not supposed to do because the president laid out by the constitution doesn't have a lot of power and 
whoever's president, they act like is the most important thing that's more important than the governor of your state and more important than this and more important than that. And it never used to be, but it's becoming more important than it was. Definitely. Um, But you still have Congress. You still have, you know, and with them, they're all really, it doesn't even matter anyway, because again, the whole fucking thing is, is rigged anyway. Um, It's controlled by the powers that be along with some of the politicians, the elites run everything. It's an oligarchy. It doesn't even fucking matter. But I'm even going upon the premise, if it did, um, why people are like, well, if this person became president, I'd leave the country. And, 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 and really, the reality is that the president doesn't have the power, even though it seems like they're... See, that's, that's the whole thing. Once a precedent's set, they keep, they'll keep doing it. So each president keeps passing more and more executive orders, not necessarily number-wise, but the type of ones, more orders that are more like laws as opposed to they're supposed to be administrative. Um, they're really not supposed to exist, period, but somehow they got away with um, issuing it more of administrative uh, executive orders, you know, that has to do with an existing law or existing policy, and you know they're they're kind of just administering it, I guess. But in reality, the president shouldn't really be that important as people make it out to be so anyways i'm gonna take a a quick break because uh, there's a bunch of clips i want to play today and uh being that again we're kind of just uh doing a a free form i guess show tonight um and probably be all over the place um, I want to take an opportunity to play some important clips. Now, this is Larkin Rose message to the voting cattle. And if you haven't heard Larkin Rose, definitely listen to him. He, he's somebody who I think can change people's minds. He really is. Um, now he's, well, I wouldn't say he's strange looking, but He's like red, he has red hair and, um, he's just, I I don't know. Like it would be better if Larkin Rose looked like, you know, Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise or something. Not that I'm saying, you know, I look at Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise or Larkin Rose for that matter like that. But I mean, or if it was a girl and that's what he kind of tried to do is get, uh, Josie Wales who, is or Josie the outlaw she calls herself who's cute but I mean she's not um you could get better looking girls to do uh that kind of stuff and then supposedly he was just her mentor I don't know anyways I have uh I don't want to really say anything bad about Larkin Rose um because I think what he does is great and he's you know, broke. As far as I know, it's not like he's making all this money off doing what he's doing. He's just, uh, doing it because this is what he believes in. So I'm going to play this, uh, clip and I also have it in my loop of, um, the 24 seven, um, live stream, at least for now. Uh, because I think it's very important, and as as many people, the more people that hear this, the better. Uh, along with some of his other stuff, so so we'll play this, and we'll be back. Of course, if you'd like to call in, uh, you can call in via Skype, which is the best way. You get the best sound. Uh, username nonpartisan liberty for all. Just send us a message of your name and what you want to talk about, and a, uh, a contact request or a. Uh, is that what it's called? Contact request. Yeah. So they add you to your contacts or 
send me a text and then call me um, if you want to call in at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Um, and anything you really want to talk about, as long as it's related to, you know, the you know freedom or something along those lines, uh, basically anything you want to bring up tonight um is fine with me so we'll be right back after this uh nonpartisan liberty for all.com You cannot begin to imagine in how many ways the world is the opposite of what you have been taught to believe. You see the guy who sells drugs to willing customers so he can feed his family as the scum of the earth, while you see the hypocrite who gives away stolen money in the name of government as a saint. You see the guy who tries to avoid being robbed by the federal thugs as a crook and a tax cheat but see as virtuous the politician who gives away the same stolen loot to people to whom it does not belong. You see the cop as a good guy when he drags a man away from his friends and family and throws him in prison for 10 years for smoking a leaf. And you see anyone who defends himself from such barbaric fascism as the lowest form of life, a cop killer. In reality, most drug dealers are more virtuous than any government social worker. And prostitutes have far less to be ashamed of than political whores because they trade only with what is rightfully theirs and only with those who want to trade with them. The upstanding, church-going, law-abiding, tax-paying citizen who votes Democrat or Republican is far more despicable and a bigger threat to humanity than the most promiscuous, lazy, drug-snorting hippie. Why? Because the hippie is willing to let others be free, and the voter is not. The damage done to society by bad habits and loose morality is nothing compared to the damage done to society by the self-righteous violence committed in the name of the state. You imagine yourselves to be charitable and tolerant when you are nothing of the sort. Even the Nazis had table manners and proper etiquette when they weren't killing people. You think you're good people because you say please and thank you? You think sitting in that big building on Sunday makes you noble and righteous? The difference between you and a common thief is that the thief has the honesty to commit the crime himself while you whine for government to do your stealing for you. The difference between you and the street thug is that the thug is open about the violence he commits while you let others forcibly control your neighbors on your behalf. You advocate theft, harassment, assault, and even murder, but accept no responsibility for doing so. You old folks want the government to steal from your kids so you can get your monthly check. You parents want all your neighbors to be robbed to pay for your kids' schooling. You all vote for whichever crook promises to steal money from other people to pay for what you want. You demand that those people who engage in behaviors you don't approve of be dragged off and locked up, but feel no guilt for the countless lives your whims have destroyed. You even call the government thugs your representatives, and yet you never take responsibility for the evil they commit. You proudly support the troops as they kill whomever the liars in D.C. tell them to kill, and you feel good about it. You call yourselves Christians or Jews or claim to follow some other religion, but the truth is what you call your religion is empty window dressing. What you truly worship, the God you really bow to, what you really believe in is the state. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, unless you can do it by way of government. Then it's just fine, isn't it? If you call it taxation and war, it stops being a sin, right? After all, it was only your God that said you shouldn't steal and murder, but the state said it was okay. It's pretty obvious which one outranks the other in your minds. Despite all the churches, synagogues, and mosques we see around us, this nation has one God and only one God, and that God is called government. Jesus taught nonviolence and told you to love your neighbor. 
but the state encourages you to vote for people who will use the violence of government to butt into every aspect of everyone else's life. Which do you believe? To those about to stone a woman who had committed adultery, Jesus said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. But the state says it's perfectly fine to lock someone up if they do something you find distasteful, such as prostitution. Which do you believe? The Christian God says, thou shalt not covet, but coveting is the lifeblood of the beast that is the state. You are taught to resent, despise, and hate anyone who has anything you don't have. You clamor for the state to tear other people down, steal their property, and give it to you. And you call that fairness. The Bible calls it coveting and stealing. You are not Christians. You are not Jews. You are not Muslims. And you certainly aren't atheists. You all have the same God, and its name is government. You're all members of the most evil, insane, destructive cult in history. If there ever was a devil, the state is it. And you worship it with all your heart and soul. You pray to it to solve every problem, to satisfy all your needs, to smite your enemies, and to shower its blessings upon you. You worship what Nietzsche called the coldest of all cold monsters, and you hate those of us who don't. To you, the greatest sin is disobeying your God, breaking the law, you call it, as if anyone could possibly have any moral obligation to obey the arbitrary commands and demands of the corrupt, lying, delusional megalomaniacs who infest this despicable town. Even your ministers, priests, and rabbis, more often than not, are traitors to their own religions, teaching that the commands of human authority should supersede adherence to the laws of the gods they say they believe in. Several years ago, I heard one pompous evangelical jackass in particular pontificating on the radio that anyone who disobeys the civil authority, be it a king or any other government, is engaging in rebellion against God. Those were the exact words he used. What if the government is doing something wrong? Well, this salesman for Satan opined, that is the business of those in government, and you are still obligated to obey. Everywhere you turn, be it the state or the church, the media or the schools, you are taught one thing above all else, the virtue of subjugating yourselves to mortals who claim to have the right to rule you. It is sickening the reverence with which you speak of the liars and thieves whose feet are so firmly planted on your necks. You call the congressmen and the judges honorable and you swoon at the magnificence of the grandiose halls they inhabit, the temples they built to celebrate the domination of mankind. You feel pride at being able to say you once shook a senator's hand or saw the president in person. Ah yes, the grand deity himself, his royal highness, the president of the United States of America. You speak the title as if you're referring to God Almighty. The vocabulary has changed a bit, but your mindset is no different from that of the groveling peasants of old who bowed low, faces in the dirt, with a feeling of unworthiness and humility when in the presence of whatever narcissist had declared himself to be their rightful lord and master. The truth of the matter, back then and today, is that these parasites who call themselves leaders are not superior beings. They are not great men and women. They are not honorable. They're not even average. The people who earn an honest living, from sophisticated millionaire entrepreneurs to illiterate day laborers doing the most menial tasks you can imagine, those people deserve your respect. Those people you should treat with courtesy and civility. But the frauds who claim the right to rule you and demand your subservience and obedience, they deserve only your scorn and contempt. Those who seek so-called high office are the lowest of the low. They may dress better, have larger vocabularies, and do a better job of planning out and executing their schemes, but they are no better than pickpockets, muggers, and carjackers. In fact, they are worse because they don't want to rob you of just your possessions they want to rob you of your very humanity, deprive you of your free will by slowly leeching away your ability to think, to judge, to act, reducing you to slaves in both body and mind. 
and still you persist in calling them leaders. Leaders? Where is it that you think you're going exactly that would require you to have a leader? If you just live your own life and mind your own damn business, exercising your own talents, pursuing your own dreams, striving to be what you believe you should be, what possible use would you have for a leader? Do you ever actually think about the words that you hear, the words that you repeat? You parrot oxymoronic terms such as the leader of the free world. Even pretending for a moment that there is some huge journey or some giant battle that everyone in the entire nation is undertaking together that would require a leader, why would you ever think, even for a moment, that the crooks that infest this town are the sort of people you should listen to or emulate or follow anywhere? Somewhere inside your mostly dormant brains, you know full well that politicians are all corrupt liars and thieves, opportunistic con men, exploiters and fear mongers. You know all this, and yet you still speak as if you are the ones who are the stupid, vicious animals, while the politicians are the great, wise role models, teachers and leaders, without whom civilization could not exist. You think these crooks are the ones who make civilization possible? What belief could be more absurd? Yet when they do their pseudo-religious rituals, deciding how to control you this week, you still call it law and continue to treat their arbitrary demands as if they were moral decrees from the gods that no decent person would ever consider disobeying. You have become so thoroughly indoctrinated into the cult of state worship that you are truly shocked when the occasional sane person states the bleeding obvious. The mere fact that the political crooks wrote something down and declared their threats to be law does not mean that any human being anywhere has the slightest moral obligation to obey. Every moment of every day, in every location and every situation, you have a moral obligation to do what you deem to be right not what some delusional bloated windbag says is legal. And that requires you to first determine right and wrong for yourself, a responsibility you spend much time and effort trying to dodge. You proclaim how proud you are to be law-abiding citizens and express your utter contempt for anyone who considers himself above your so-called laws, laws that are nothing more than the selfish whims of tyrants and thieves. The word crime once meant an act harmful to another person. Now it means disobedience to any one of the myriad of arbitrary commands coming from a parasitical criminal class. To you, the term crime is nearly synonymous with the word sin, implying that the ones whose commands are being disobeyed must be something akin to gods, when in truth they are more akin to leeches. The very phrase, taking the law into your own hands, perfectly expresses what a sacrilege it is in your eyes for a mere human being to take upon himself the responsibility to judge right from wrong and to act accordingly instead of doing what you do, unthinkingly obeying whatever capricious commands this cesspool of maggots spews forth. You glorify this criminal class as lawmakers and believe that no one is lower than a lawbreaker someone who would dare disobey the politicians. Likewise, you speak with pious reverence of law enforcers, those who forcibly impose the politicians every whim upon the rest of us. When the state uses violence, you imagine it to be inherently righteous and just, and if anyone resists, they are, in your eyes, contemptible lowlifes, lawless terrorist criminals. You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host, Dave Bourne. Call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in username Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Nonpartisan Liberty for All, and we are back. I didn't uh, actually play uh, the whole thing. It, it goes on a little longer but uh it's like goes on like 20 minutes and i think i played 13 but when i listen to larkin rose the the thing that's great about him is I, not only do i agree with 
everything I've heard from him, that doesn't mean that there isn't things that he hasn't talked about that I don't agree with. But, and I've said this uh, a bunch of times recently, he's great at articulating it. That's why I, I hope people go to his YouTube channel. And I don't get any, that that's the whole thing, is my goal is not, well, I mean, I'd like to make some money, but I mean, my ultimate goal is not about money or fame or any of that shit. Um, if it was, I probably would have quit the, the show a long time ago. Um, it's about getting a message out. It's about getting people to stop and think and like they say, you know, hearts and minds, getting to people's hearts and minds. And the truth is on my side and Larkin Rose's side and anybody who agrees with those opinions. They are facts. Now, is there any perfect society or perfect government or utopia? That That's the whole thing, too. I, and... Somebody says this, and they. And when I think about it after the fact, it really pisses me off. When they say, you know, my, like my utopia or whatever, it's it's very condescending um, because it's not a utopia because it's not perfect, and you will still have issues and things like that. Um, it's just a free society is what it is. It's the difference between living in a free society. It doesn't mean because you live in a free society that everything's perfect and bad things don't happen. Um, living in a free society actually means that sometimes bad things are going to happen because you don't control everything everybody does you don't regulate everything everybody does people have the freedom to make their own decisions and sometimes people are going to make decisions that affect other people directly and do things like kill people or fight people or rob them or whatever but people are doing that anyway people are always going to do that no matter what the system is i can almost equate an organized society without government to the legalization of drugs argument. And I can do it in this sense that the legalization of drugs, not in that it's the same thing, but in that the point that if you, whether drugs are legal or not, the same thing is going to happen if drugs are illegal. So like what I mean is, if you, people will say they don't want to legalize drugs because, you know, that more people will use them and whatever. And the point is that you're having, you have a drug problem now and and it's illegal and you have a drug problem. So what is the fucking difference? You're actually, I think, going to make it better by legalizing them and lower the amount of uh, drug problems, but there's still going to be drug problems, whether they're legal or, they're, or they're, it's not. And with the government, it's the same thing, whether you have an organized society that's not based on a ruling class uh, or you do, you're still going to have bad things that are going to happen. Now, the difference is, is that I believe you'll actually lower the bad things that will happen in the long term. Now, in the short term, it's different because I think initially people wouldn't know what to do with themselves based on all the indoctrination and how to handle, you know, some people wouldn't even know how to handle being free, I, I, I think, it because essentially everyone is in some sort of slavery right now except the elite. And slavery doesn't mean that, you know, you're on a plantation getting whipped. What I mean is that 
you can't tell me that if you go to work every day and money is taken out of your check without your permission, without your consent, and in my case, fuck, I'm trying to think the total of uh, percentage-wise. It's like 25%. It's more than that. Shit, it might be about 30% that was taken out last year. And this year, when I look at what it is now, let me actually do the math. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'm not just talking about... And we don't even have state income tax in Nevada. So if we had state income tax in Nevada, I'd be really fucked because then I'd have even more taxes. So this is not just a uh, federal income tax that I'm talking about. This is everything that comes out. This is an in, not counting insurance, but counting uh, FICA and Social Security, which is bullshit because why should I be paying? Basically, I'm paying... The, the concept of Social Security is ridiculous anyway, but I'm paying really... Because they they fucking <laughs> they want to make you think that you're paying for your social security, right? Because I would say, well, I don't want to pay for my social security. I'll save my money and put it away, and you know, uh, I'm I'm fine. But really, I'm paying for the people that are collecting it now. So I looked at my check today to look at my vacation, and let me see. Based on how much has been taken out so far. Of course, it will go up because once I, I'm going to go over a certain amount because of uh, the bonus this year um, that was higher than usual. So I'm probably going to hit. Uh, I may not because I might have hit the same one last year, so I might not hit a different tax bracket, but um, it's possible that I could hit the next. I don't think so, though, because I think last year. Um, I made pretty close to the same anyway, even though the bonus was bigger, but I mean, it wasn't that much bigger. Yeah. 25% has been taken out. That's a quarter of my fucking money. A quarter of my money. Think of that for a minute. If I go to your fucking store and tell you, you're going to give me a quarter of your profits now, and that wouldn't even be the case. You're just going to give me a quarter of your revenue because essentially you're paying taxes based on, think of a person working as generating revenue because they have bills to pay. They have, you know, they, I could say I have bills to pay. I have expenses. I have all of these things, right? So if you think of a person like a company, what I gross would be like my revenue um, or my EBITDA earnings before depreciation, amortization, and taxes, right? So then I have taxes to pay that they just automatically take out without my consent. I have insurance to pay. That is, it, it's like, well, actually, the insurance is not consensual anymore, neither. So I even forgot about that. So I have insurance to pay that's non-consensual. Now, and that's something I never bring up about the Obamacare that I always forget to bring up, that it's it's forced, it's, a, it's mandated. Um, I do bring it up once in a while, but I, I mostly talk about, because I assume everybody, you know, realizes that and I go into like the computer aspect of the, or the data collection aspect of it, which is, um, the scariest part, but, um, and what it's going to turn into. But so then I have all these bills. So that's like me coming into your store and saying, I want 25% of your revenue. Now, your actual net income could be a lot less than that. So f personally, right, I would consider my net income um, what, what I am... Um, 
end up with after I pay all my bills, right? Because that's really what your net income, I guess, technically would be. It would be minus all your expenses and here's your net income. So, but I'm saying that if it's the same thing, the government, they're not taking taxes off my net income. They're not saying, oh, we're going to take, you know, 25% of what you have left after you pay all your bills. They're saying we're going to take right off the top because if they took 25% of after I paid all my bills, I'd have a lot more money and a lot less taxes would come out. But at the same time, none of this is consensual. None of this is who, who was around when the constitution was written, you know, who makes any of these choices. And I say, People will say, well, if you don't like it, then leave. Well, where am I going to go when the world has been taken over by governments? Because it's government that's the problem. I don't necessarily think the United States is the problem, although the United States is a government. But it's not just the United States. And I've said this so many times that... It's government. My problem is with government. My problem is not just with the United States government. It's with government. Now, the United States government is getting pretty bad. One of the reasons is because they're able to because they're an empire. They got lucky after World War II and became a huge empire because they were the only ones. They were the ones with all the gold. And that's really, um, you know, to summarize it, I guess how they became so big. But let's look at some things here. So based on what Larkin Rose was saying and just in general. So you're born. I'm actually Dave born. That was corny. But you're born somewhere in the world and we'll say in the United States because that's what we're talking about and that's where I live. And so that's why I talk more about obviously the United States, but I want freedom for the whole world. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's impossible to get freedom in one city, never mind uh, the whole fucking world. And I'm one person. So anyway, you're born until you're 18, you have no say anyway. You can't go anywhere. So even if you wanted to leave, everything's forced on you. Not only is everything forced on you by the government, everything's forced on you by your parents. And you don't even have a say. You don't have a vote. Not that your vote means anything anyway, but people believe it does. So based on what uh, I'm trying to, I guess, go through this based on what some people think. So if you believe your vote means something and whatever, fine. Um, But you don't get to vote if you're under 18. So you've had, you've been forced to go to school and been indoctrinated. You've been forced to do this and that between your parents and the government and never had any say at all. None. Now, your parents could give you say if they wanted to within your house and with within the laws of the government or even without outside because they could say, you know, um, fuck, you can go do this. But if the government catches you, they're going to fucking arrest you. But I'm not going to stop you or whatever. So. The only freedom that you have any chance of getting is based on who you happen to be born to, which is all just the luck of the draw, I guess. So if you have parents like the majority of them, they're going to run the majority of your life. Now you have 
some parents that are more involved than others. You have parents that are fucking animals that beat their kids and molest them and whatever. Um, But we'll stick to the majority of parents that are there and they tell you what to do, but they give you some freedom, but they restrict it. So you go through this And one, especially now, you know, you have more helicopter parents now you have because they're been government media has really brainwashed them. Um, And you have more and more laws every day. You have more laws. I don't give a fuck where you are in the United States. Um you might have a new county ordinance, a city, a state, or federal, which will affect the whole country. But most likely, every day you have a new law of some sort. And that's been happening for years and years. So no matter what, how are things not going to get less free how is the level of freedom not going to go down because no matter what happens laws are being passed constantly and as time moves on the older the country gets there's more laws rarely do they repeal any law and they criticize people who don't submit bills um, or don't, you know, they'll call them the congressmen that haven't done anything that I would, I support, Hey, there's a congressman who didn't submit anything. He didn't vote for anything. Um, okay, good job. Or somebody, Hey, all they did was submit to, uh, get rid of this bill or get rid of this law. Assuming it was, you know, wasn't a law that protected freedom and somehow, um, so essentially Congress is looked down upon if they don't submit bills. So you have 430 on a federal level, 435 idiots that are vying to get their bills passed and they're writing all these bills and trying to come up with these ideas to essentially make either restrict people's freedom or make them comply with something. And then when you turn 18, now all of a sudden uh, they say, well, you get to vote now. So now you're, you're free um, and you don't have to follow what your parents say. So you're, you're free because you have a vote out of, you know, millions of people uh, when it comes to the president, hundreds of millions when it comes to the president, um, millions when it comes to senators, even your local government is probably hundreds of thousands, depending on where you live, uh, at least, you know, in the, you know, 50,000 people, uh, probably, And again, it depends on the office and where you live. So the say you have is minimal along with the government trying, the federal government trying to control things on a state level, including elections. There's money that comes from other states that goes into your state to get people elected. There's, I mean, it's all, it's all rigged. The whole fucking thing is rigged for one. Even if it wasn't, Where does the government get their authority? What gives, and this is something that Larkin Rose had said that I didn't really think about, but is is a great point that essentially, if we're all supposed to be equal, if one person has a right that another person doesn't, then that's 
invalid. That's not the way he, I'm paraphrasing, but to say if if one person can do that, then everybody should be able to do that. So in a debate, he actually said that in a, in a debate against the minarchist that, you know, if you're going to give power to certain people, but not other people, then you're giving people, uh, allowing people to control others and being able to, in a sense, rule over them. You're, they're not equal. Uh, and I'm not explaining it as well as he did, obviously, but we don't have equality, even though you're never going to have equality as far as everybody being equal, because people aren't equal, different people can do different things, but equal under the law, that if somebody has power that somebody else doesn't, under a government structure, then that is not equal under the law and it's not valid, but that's not the words that he used. So for example, like a cop has powers that regular people don't have and you can't have that in a free society. You can't have people or a politician that can make laws that has powers that they have that you don't. Now you can have powers as far as you own your own business and you're able to do what you want with your own business and people, it's all voluntary, but when it comes to the government has given this authority to this person And they can do something, but you can't do it. But as I've said time and time again, how does the government have any authority whatsoever? How do they have any right to tell anybody to do anything? How do they have any authority to tell anybody to do anything? And where do their powers come from? Their quote unquote powers because what what happened? So you had a revolutionary war. I'm summarizing here, of course. Um, they kicked England out. Then a bunch of essentially the elite at the time. Now, there's a lot of stories that differ when it comes to this. A lot of them, actually, as far as, you know, looking at history and how it's interpreted, different people and end up interpreting things different ways. Um, and they'll say that, well, you know, they really just wanted for the rich people, rich elites to rule. And probably the majority of them were like that. But essentially, regardless, what happened was a certain amount of people, you know, representatives from every, uh, I guess, at the time it would be colonies, got together. But a very small amount of people got together to establish first the Articles of Confederation and then essentially overthrew the government. Now, supposedly they followed the Constitution on, I'm sorry, the Articles of Confederation on implementing the Constitution, but they did it in a way that they knew the people that would object to it. And this is my understanding that the people would that would object to it, they tried to keep as many people in the dark as possible that they thought would um, make it harder for them to do. So, you know, worst case, they overthrew the government. Best case, they 
sort of through over through the government um, or they changed out the government s- sort of following the ways to do it, but not fully. Um, so they even overthrew their own government sort of now I, I know there's dis- people will dispute exactly how that went down and I'm not a historian but you had people, and I know this for a fact, that they they didn't agree to this and they had to get them, you know, they had to add things like the Bill of Rights and they had to, you know, talk people into it. And that the people from each I guess they were states at that point, but the people from each states that not everybody was included that maybe should have been. And at the same time, who the fuck agreed to this? So you had like 7 million people in the country at the time. And then you had what a couple hundred at the most. I I don't know how many people were there um, in the, you know, that were involved counting everybody that voted or had something to say or was aware of the switch from the Articles of Confederation to the Constitution or that were involved in the Articles of Confederation themselves. And really, they did the same thing they did today, is they exploited people's fears. And this is why... I believe, along with the definition of government, that this whole thing that is happening now, that everything that's happened up to this point, and I believe the people have gotten in the way. I, it, it it hasn't just been the government has got, gotten away with everything and people have never done anything to help stop certain things or slow things down um but as the years went on it was less and less and it was easier and easier for the government to get things through and not listen to the people but which is it's surprising in some ways because now with the internet and you can view all these uh unclassified documents and all of this stuff and show the history of things that went on and people still don't believe it. They still think it's conspiracy and people still don't think that. But anyway, that you, they used fear because it was okay. Well, what if England attacks again? What if, you know, this country, whatever, Now, if you look at the 13 colonies, if you put them, you know, they were were along the coast, basically. But if you squished them together, they were probably bigger than Europe. Now, population wise, I don't know at the time what the population of, um, you know, Western Europe was. And when I say Europe, I'm talking about Western Europe that they were at least bigger in size. Now, population, I don't know because, I, like I said, I didn't look at the population of Europe, but I know there were like 7 million people. So they said, well, if we form a, a country, you know, we will have, uh, if somebody tries to attack us and we'll have uh, the militias to help defend that and we'll have a form of currency that is uniform and 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 with things like that i go back to europe so why couldn't they make alliances and each country each state be its own country or not have countries at all but at least from the beginning to have each state, instead of being part of a federal government, 
you know, being part of a alliance that, yes, we will fight against, you know, anybody trying to take this territory. And if they wanted to, they could all, you know, like a United Nations type thing. And they could have done things like that instead of saying, okay, we're going to be ruled by a federal government. Because the the Articles of Confederation were a lot freer um, than, from what I understand, I haven't read through them. Uh, we studied them a long time ago, but they, and that was the problem, that they wanted the federal government to be stronger. And look how strong it's become. So... But the idea, in any case, whether these individual states were countries or not, was, again, you had people making decisions for others that had power over them, that never consented to this power. Because unless 100% of the people agree... You don't have consent. You have, well, we elected this representative. Well, there's no way, unless 100% of the people said, we elect this representative and he can do whatever he wants. But then what about the people of the future? Which is not just us now, but throughout the years. When people had kids. And they never agreed to it. And then they had kids and so forth. And now we're at where we're at now. Having these rulers that basically we're in a position now where the truth is, and I don't know how how people can't see this, is the government can pretty much do whatever they want. They don't because of one reason, and that's the illusion of freedom. And I've talked about that before. Because if you had somebody just declare themselves dictator, I can't see a big percentage of Americans who have guns, luckily, saying, no, we're not going to have a dictator we have to take out this dictator, not necessarily take over the government. And that that's where I think, um, you know, I'm totally against anything that has to do with taking over a government because the whole thing is they would just develop another government. And that's probably what would eventually happen anyway. But I think it would be a big cycle. And I've talked about this before. So there's, there's, a, there's a cycle that basically I think has happened kind of through history to an extent. But I think America has gotten so powerful that I don't know that it, you know, it will fall. So meaning that, you know, empires, they start with freedom they get people to buy into it then they you know their plan all along is to turn on them and take control they take over its tyranny uh the people fight back against it and the part that's missing i think is going to a a organized society with no government but then what you'd have is eventually people would slowly implement a government but then it would go back to they start at you know you start at freedom again and then you go in that circle and it gets to tyranny and then it goes to you know what i mean so i i believe that no matter what maintaining a organized society without a government is only it's only a matter of time before you end up with a government because over generations 
things are going to change. And that's the problem. But you could probably have it for a few generations. Now, it would depend on how they raised their kids and if, you know, those type of things and if that carried on. But I think it would only carry on so far. So eventually, I think they'd say, we need this, we need that, we need a small government. They would start as a small government and then it would grow and grow because, again, you'd give people power. They'd take more power. They'd, they'd exploit things. They'd use false flags. They'd use, they'd exploit things that happen, whatever, and then you'd have a government again. But I don't believe in, uh, like, you have some people that that believe in, in going to war with the government or something or overthrowing the government. And I don't believe in that one. I mean, I, I believe in the value of human lives for one and two, I think it's pointless. That's not the way to change things because you're really not changing anybody's idea. You're just installing a different type of government. That's not the problem in, in, in my uh, opinion it's not the type of government. It's government. Government is the problem. So in order to get to a point where you don't have government, you need the people to see things for what they are. The truth to get out. And for people to not use violence unless they absolutely have to in self-defense, but to use non-compliance. And what happens is, so in my theory, I guess, is if you convinced enough people of the truth and they said, yeah, the way things should be, is as long as you don't kill anybody or rape anybody or interfere with anybody's freedom, including their property, you have the right to do whatever you want. If anybody interferes with that, they're violating your rights. And that's the truth. They are. Now, government has said it is okay for them to violate your rights, and people somehow buy into it. They have been brainwashed to, this is the law. That means it's good and it has to be followed. Somewhere people uh, took morality and good and merged it with the law. And because it's government, and this is something that Larkin Rose is big on too, is because it's government, people follow it. If it was me or an average person try to do the same thing, people would laugh at you or punch you in the face. But because it's government, all of a sudden, it's God's. Because you get a job with the government to enforce their bullshit laws, which they have no right to pass, that they are violating your rights when they pass them, somehow you are obligated to, to respect these people and defending yourself against them is, oh my God, how could you do that? Like the percentage of the population, Larkin Rose did, and I'll play it uh, probably in a couple minutes, you know, when to shoot a cop. And even the name alone got people like nuts. What is a cop? A cop is somebody that was hired by the government to enforce the laws of the politicians. A government that does not ask for your consent violates your rights. And when I say violates your rights, I mean the majority of their laws violate your rights. Their definition, the government's definition of violating your rights is based on their writings. 
not it's not even based on their writings. It's based on how they feel that fucking day. But it's based on their most recent laws. It's not even based on the Constitution. But just because they write a law, it does not mean that they're not violating your rights. When the police arrest you for having any drugs on you, they are violating your rights. In that situation, now I'm not saying people should do this, nor uh, am I saying I would do it, but police do not have a right to kidnap you. And the fact that they work for the government, if anybody else did it, what would you do? You'd fight back. But because it's the government, you comply. Now, what Larkin Rose actually talks about which is an interesting point is the state of mind that people believe. Now there's some people that don't fight back because they know they're dead if they do it. And I'm obviously one of those people. And so are a lot of people, but there are people that don't fight back because they believe in the government's authority. And that's the problem. They believe that even though the government is violating your rights, it's okay because they're government. So his one of his main messages that I haven't really talked about is that people look at government differently than they look at regular people and they give respect and authority and compliance to government because they're government. Not because of what I'm saying. You know, if I give any um, compliance to government, it's only because they're threatening to kill me if I don't comply. And that's it. Unless I did something that was, um, you know, if I killed somebody and it wasn't self-defense or, you know, something like that, that violated basically the non-aggression principle, which, you know, um, even then the government really, their system is so fucked up that I don't believe they have any authority even in, in those circumstances. But I think there should be in an organized society, ways of dealing with people that murder others and violate, you know, the non-aggression principle and violate people's, uh, you know, murder, rape, assault, you know, those things. So, um, although that's really the only time when I still don't think it's, quote unquote valid because of their fucked up system. It's like it's like creating an illegal system and then even though you're doing the right thing in one case that makes it okay. Um but there should be another way to deal with those people than the police and and the government. But his point is, is that because people are so one of his points is that because people are so brainwashed that they look at the government differently automatically, that they believe that the government has authority over them, that they believe that the government is to be respected and that they have actual authority, that they believe in their authority, that people that pay taxes, some of them believe that they actually owe taxes, that they, they believe they should have to pay them, which is a bunch of bullshit. Now, if I want to pay for something, then I'll choose to pay for something. I should not be forced to pay for your kids babysitting government babysitting, um, which is government schools or for the majority Not the majority, really, any of it. I shouldn't be forced to pay for fucking anything by the government. But they just take my money. And not only that, they will kidnap and kill 
based on laws that somehow because in whenever they wrote the I think 1791 is the actual constitution but you know even if we will go back to 1776 because they declared independence from England which was fine that was really the only document that I'm fine with you know saying that hey you guys can't rule us. Basically, what we should do now is not go to war or not anything like that. Declare our independence from the United States government as individuals and say that, look, we're, I'm declaring independence. As long as you leave me alone, we don't have a problem. Um... I'm not going to bother anybody else or hurt anybody or do anything uh, to anybody else's property. And besides that, I have the right to do whatever I want and you have no authority to tell me otherwise. So go fuck yourself. And they won't listen to me or they'll just, you know, of course, tell me to fuck off or, well, they won't tell me to fuck off. Uh, They'll just continue to do what they do. Which is, you know, harass me if they want to uh, enforce their ridiculous laws and pull a gun on me or threaten to kill me if I don't obey their ridiculous laws. And, you know, it's hard to sit there and, you know, know the truth about things or, and I'm not saying it like, I know the secret that you guys don't know. I mean, it's, it's there. It's obvious. It's right in front of everybody's faces, but to realize it and realize that you're a slave being taken for your money, working for the government, the government owns your house. You pay them property taxes. If you don't pay them, they'll take your house away. Knowing all this stuff, um, it's not even knowing it because everybody knows that it's realizing it for what it is and then trying to live your life. And you're sitting there like, what the fuck? I'm nothing but a slave. I'm having, you know, I'm being run, uh, having laws dictated to me by the elite, by an oligarchy who wants to control everyone. And if I want to do anything about it, I'll either go to jail or get killed. So, you know, of course, I choose to use this as a forum to try to reach people. But that's all I can really do. And I've talked about before, you can't solve the um you know you can't get rid of the system through the system so that's why non-compliance is really in thinking about it i mean i'm always open to ideas um not violent ones i mean in that in non-compliance yeah i think that the altercations would happen but it wouldn't be anything like a war against the government or an overthrow against the government. Speaking of that, some fucking idiot fucking C word try to write this uh, book. The war, I, I talked about this, I think, but um, to remind people the war on cops, that there's a war on cops. And this is just so ridiculous that the amount of cops that are going to be killed this year, which is always under a hundred, it's like 60 or 70. 
it's usually between like 40 and 70 for the whole country, mind you. Um, and it's a lot more people getting killed. There's not a war on cops. There's a war on people. There's been a war on people since the beginning of any government in that country. So in the U S since the government began, so started the war on people because the, the control and the getting people in line as far as how elites wanted people to be started. And then, like I've said before, then you got to climb the stairs. You start at the bottom and then you keep going and we're at where we're at now. And I think we're in a place where there's, I, I don't have much faith that there, anything will ever change. Unfortunately, I, I, I wish I did, but I don't. Um, so I'm going to play uh, another Larkin Rose uh, clip and then we'll come right back to wrap up the show. So uh, again, be sure to check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. That's nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. And we'll be right back after this uh, clip from uh, Larkin Rose. When should you shoot a cop? That question, even without an answer, makes most law-abiding taxpayers go into knee-jerk conniptions. The indoctrinated masses all race to see who can be first and loudest to proclaim that it is never okay to forcibly resist law enforcement. In doing so, they also inadvertently demonstrate why so much of human history has been plagued by tyranny and oppression. In an ideal world, cops would do nothing except protect people from thieves and attackers, in which case shooting a cop would never be justified. In the real world, however, far more injustice, violence, torture, theft, and outright murder has been committed in the name of law enforcement than has been committed in spite of it. To get a little perspective, try watching a documentary or two about some of the atrocities committed by the regimes of Stalin or Lenin or Chairman Mao or Hitler or Pol Pot or any number of other tyrants in history. Pause the film when the jackboots are just about to herd innocent people into the cattle cars or just about to gun them down as they stand on the edge of a ditch and then ask yourself the question, when should you shoot a cop? Keep in mind the evils of those regimes were committed in the name of law. And as much as the statement may make people cringe, the history of the human race would have been a lot less gruesome if there had been a lot more cop killers around to deal with the state mercenaries of those regimes. Now, people don't mind when you point out the tyranny that has happened in other countries, but most have a hard time viewing their own country, their own government, and their own law enforcers in any sort of objective way. Having been trained to feel a blind loyalty to the ruling class of the particular piece of dirt they live on, also known as patriotism, and having been trained to believe that obedience is a virtue, the idea of forcibly resisting law enforcement is simply unthinkable to many. Literally, they can't even think about it. And humanity has suffered horribly because of it. It is a testament to the effectiveness of authoritarian indoctrination that literally billions of people throughout history have begged and screamed and cried in the face of authoritarian injustice and oppression, but only a tiny fraction have ever actually lifted a finger to try to stop it. Even when people can recognize tyranny and oppression, they still usually talk about working within the system, the same system that's responsible for the tyranny and the oppression. People want to believe that the system will, sooner or later, provide justice. 
The last thing they want to consider is that they should illegally resist. That if they want to achieve justice, they must become criminals and terrorists, which is what anyone who resists legal injustice is automatically labeled. But history shows all too well that those who fight for freedom and justice almost always do so illegally, i.e. without the permission of the ruling class. If politicians think that they have the right to impose any law they want, and cops have the attitude that as long as it's called law they will enforce it, what is there to prevent complete tyranny? Not the consciences of the lawmakers or their hired thugs, obviously, and not any election or petition to the politicians. When tyrants define what counts as law, then by definition, it is up to the lawbreakers to combat tyranny. Pick any example of abuse of power, whether it's the fascist so-called war on drugs, the police thuggery that has become so common, the random stops and searches now routinely carried out in the name of security, such as at airports, border checkpoints that aren't even at the border, sobriety checkpoints, and so on, or any other example. Now ask yourself the uncomfortable question. If it's wrong for cops to do these things, doesn't that imply that the people have a right to resist such actions? And of course, state mercenaries don't take kindly to being resisted, even non-violently. If you question their right to detain you, interrogate you, search you, invade your home, and so on, you are very likely to be tasered, physically assaulted, kidnapped, put in a cage, or shot. If a cop decides to treat you like livestock, whether he does it legally or not, you will usually have only two options, submit or kill the cop. You can't resist a cop just a little and get away with it. He will always call in more of his fellow gang members until you are subdued or dead. Basic logic dictates that you either have an obligation to let law enforcers have their way with you, or you have the right to stop them from doing so, which will almost always require killing them. Politely asking fascists to not be fascist has a very poor track record throughout history. Consider the recent Indiana Supreme Court ruling, which declared that if a cop tries to illegally enter your home, it's against the law for you to do anything to stop him. Aside from the patent absurdity of it, since it amounts to giving thugs with badges permission to break the law and makes it a crime for you to defend yourself against a criminal, if he has a badge, consider the logical ramifications of that attitude. There were once some words written on a piece of parchment, those words now known as the Fourth Amendment, that said that you have the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures at the hands of government agents. In Indiana today, what could that possibly mean? The message from the ruling class is quite clear and utterly insane. It amounts to this. We don't have the right to invade your home without probable cause, but if we do, you have no right to stop us and we have the right to arrest you if you try. Why not apply that to the rest of the Bill of Rights while we're at it? You have the right to say what you want, but if we use violence to shut you up, you have to let us. I can personally attest to the fact that that is the attitude of the U.S. so-called Department of Justice. Or maybe you have the right to have guns, but if we try to forcibly and illegally disarm you and you resist, we have the right to kill you. Ask Randy Weaver or the Branch Davidians about that one. You have the right to not testify against yourself, but when we coerce you into confessing and call it a plea agreement, you can't do a thing about it. What good is a right? What does the term right even mean if you have an obligation to allow jackboots to violate your so-called rights? It makes the term absolutely meaningless. To be blunt, if you have the right to do A, it means that if someone tries to stop you from doing A, even if he has a badge and a politician scribble, sometimes called law, on his side, you have the right to use whatever amount of force is necessary to resist that person. That's what it means to have an unalienable right. If you have the unalienable right to speak your mind, a la the First Amendment, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to shut you up.
if you have the unalienable right to be armed, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to disarm you. If you have the right to not be subjected to unreasonable searches and seizures, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to inflict those upon you. Those who are proud to be law-abiding don't like to hear this and don't like to think about this, but what's the alternative? If you do not have the right to forcibly resist so-called legal injustice, that logically implies that you have an obligation to allow government agents to do absolutely anything they want to you, your home, your family, your neighbors, and so on. Really, there are only two choices. You are a slave, the property of the politicians without any rights at all, or you have the right to violently resist government attempts to oppress you. There can be no other option. Of course, on a practical level, openly resisting the gang called government is usually very hazardous to one's health. But there's a big difference between obeying for the sake of self-preservation, which is often necessary and rational, and feeling a moral obligation to go along with whatever the ruling class wants to do to you, which is pathetic and insane. Most of the incomprehensible atrocities that have occurred throughout history were due in large part to the fact that most people answer never to the question of when should you shoot a cop. The correct answer is when evil is legal, become a criminal. When oppression is enacted as law, become a lawbreaker. And when those violently victimizing the innocent have badges, become a cop killer. So the next time you hear of a police officer being killed in the line of duty, take a moment to consider the very real possibility that maybe in that case, the law enforcer was the bad guy and the cop killer was the good guy. As it happens, that has been the case more often than not throughout human history. What's the mindset of these mammoth corporations who are now apparently in partnership with government? Eric Schmidt is Google's CEO. People are treating Google like their most trusted friend. Should they be? If you have something that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Google has already been caught and fined for systematically hacking and harvesting passwords from millions of private Wi-Fi networks with its mapping cars and illegally siphoning private data from iPhone users. We don't need you to type at all because we know where you are with your permission. We know where you've been with your permission. We can more or less guess what you're thinking about. So Schmidt simply views the invasion of privacy as a way to allow the internet giant to gain more information about you. And then that data will let the search engine help you in your everyday life. Don't you get it? Google is trying to amass a huge amount of personal information about you to help you. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's what I call the creepy line and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line but not cross it. I would argue that implanting things in your brain is, a, is beyond the creepy line. Mine in particular. Uh, yes, yes. Um, at least for the moment, uh, until the technology gets better. Uh, let's talk a little bit about information and search. Wait a minute, what was that? I would argue that implanting things in your brain is, a, is beyond the creepy line. Mine uh, at least for the moment, uh, until the technology gets better. Is he saying that Google's creepy line is defined only by the current level of technology? What does a higher level of technology have to do with morals or ethics? But what I learned in Silicon Valley was there is no moral component to technology unless humans insist that it be there. Are you looking for a podcast that talks about life, the universe? everything listen in to the illumination hour monday nights 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific listen live at spreaker.com or nonpartisan liberty we're also on soundcloud spreaker twitter tumblr youtube and itunes 
The Illumination Hour, brought to you by Nonpartisan Liberty for All Media and Radio Network, and your host, Ellen Stallone, because a spark can illuminate the world. Promoting the ideas of true freedom and liberty, Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with Dave Bourne. And we are back, well, back for at least about 30 seconds. Um, that's pretty much all the time we have for tonight. In summary, uh, you know, it's sometimes it's hard even to do this show. Because all the stuff that goes on, and there's stuff that, of course, I don't even know, um, meaning uh, that I haven't researched or or looked at, um, that I should be doing more research and more looking at articles and things like that. But And then, of course, there's the stuff that the American public doesn't know uh, that we have uh, ideas of things and come to conclusions but don't have uh, proof. And that, that's a lot of things because everything people just take the government's word for or take the police's word for um, the majority of things, and we just don't know. They, there are a lot of unclassified or declassified documents and things like that that there are, is proof of all of these things So that have happened. So you can only imagine, you know, if this happens, how are you uh, going to believe uh, what they say about this? You know, so that's where I've gotten to a point where... I just listen to the information, try to see what their angle is on it, see how they use it to exploit things to push their agenda and come to my own conclusions because that's really all you can do. You can't believe what you hear in government media or what the police say or any of it, what the politicians or the government, even if it's true. I mean, it, it could be something true. But you can't just believe it. Um, so it's it's just fucked up. And the the real truth is, I I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I mean, everything points to this is that they want to take full control, just like in all these you know books and stories, uh, m- movies um, like 1984, and there, there's a whole bunch of them that the government wants to take total control over every aspect of your life. And you can either sit there and let it happen or you can try to do something about it. So I will continue to do what I can and talk about the things that hopefully will finally resonate with people. I mean, talking about different things you know, I'm not going to talk about the same thing every night, obviously, and we haven't. We've covered so many topics on this show because you never know what's going to resonate with somebody. There might be one thing that finally makes somebody think, and then from that, they start doing other research, and then they start thinking about other things, and you never know. So the one good thing, of course, is the truth is on our side, and... You know, hopefully people will not just wake up and see that, you know, well, what the U.S. government is doing and make it about the people. And that's the problem. People have to realize it's the institution. And that's the hardest thing. People will criticize uh, or Americans or whoever in other countries will criticize the people in office, the president or senators or Congress or whatever, but they won't always criticize or in general won't criticize the institution 
of government and police and all of these things that the institution is the problem and that the institution needs to be eliminated because the institution is what causes all of these things. And the people are just scenery just for people to get caught up in. And you have people that, uh, or celebrities or, uh, talk radio, uh, media that want you to focus on the people, not the institutions like Alex Jones and, uh, people like that, how he cannot, you know, unless he just lies and doesn't really say what he believes about government, but how he can say all the things he says and then still say there should be a government, uh, is insane but thanks for everybody for tuning in i always appreciate it and we will be back on tuesday to talk about the rights of teens so be sure to tune in for that and next week uh i may have to reschedule it uh depends on how prepared i feel i am but we will talk about the adam lanza sandy hook uh, is it a hoax? Is it a, did it happen? But were, was the story altered or did it happen as they said it happened? Uh, we'll talk about that, uh, sometime we're ske- scheduled to next Wednesday, but it depends on how much, uh, if I'm ready to, uh, prepared to talk about that because I want to make sure I have all the information I need to um, talk about that uh, case. So thanks, everybody. Remember, t- we're live streaming 24-7 uh, old shows. So right after this, uh, you can continue to tune in. Or actually, you have to get out of this show and then click on the live stream, the other live stream to continue. But... Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. The way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime.